Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're going to love today's video because I'm going to go through GS Pro's recommended minimum computer specifications to run their software, and also my experience running their software with two different computers. It just wasn't possible to do that with that laptop because of one specific reason. I'll go over that right now. So I'm going to put a graphic up here on the screen, and let's go over that. Now, when you look here on the left, this is GS Pro's information from their website. And they are going to require you to have Windows 10 or Windows 11. And then this is their recommended minimum hardware for 1080p play. Four gig of free space, GTX 970 as far as your GPU or graphics card, eight gig of memory or your RAM. You're gonna to have to have a stable internet connection because when GS Pro starts, it's going to check for your license and it's also gonna check for new uh, versions of the software so that it will download that before it starts. And then you're gonna either need to have an ethernet port or Bluetooth depending upon your launch monitor. All right, so as far as recommended hardware for a great 1080p experience per GS Pro, and this is what I recommend as well, you're gonna to wanna to have 10 gig of free space, an RTX 3060 Ti GPU, which is Nvidia or higher, and you're gonna to need to have 16 gig of memory. Next, recommended hardware for a great 4K experience. You're gonna to wanna to have 10 gig of free space, an RTX 3080 GPU, and you're gonna to wanna to have 32 gig of memory. Now let's go to the middle here and I'm gonna go over the laptop. I ran the laptop for, I don't know, probably four or five months successfully. Uh, initially I had 16 gig of RAM and it just wasn't enough because a lot of the newer courses will use up to 10 gig of RAM. And it just was using too much of my system resources. So I actually did a video where I upgraded that laptop to 32 gig of RAM. And then initially uh, that worked fine up to medium speed on most golf courses on GS Pro. Uh, however, I actually upgraded it again to 64 gig of RAM. But the reality is that didn't really help at all once I did that. All right, so let's go through the specs on the laptop. It's on the middle of this graphic. So this CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 7735HS. That was plenty fast enough as far as the processor or CPU. The GPU is where I really struggled. And that was an AMD Radeon RX 6550M. And that only had four gig of GDDR6. Now that is 100% the problem because really you're gonna need to have more basically video memory or GDDR and it just wasn't enough uh, to run the software properly and that may also translate to like E6 or the Golf Club 2019. You're gonna wanna have a better GPU than that and really in my opinion, laptops are not ideal because like I called or I actually messaged MSI who made this computer and I wasn't able to upgrade the GPU on it because it's actually soldered right on there and I'm not messing with that and I'm certainly not paying for that. So let's finish this and I'll go over what I did next. So looking at the middle again, uh, as far as the solid state driver, the SSD, I had the Micron 2400 that was plenty and basically uh, that's 512 gigabytes or a half a terabyte roughly. And then the RAM, I had 64 gig of RAM, plenty of RAM. And then if you notice the note at the bottom, the fan would run at full speed the entire time I played. And quite frankly, it was annoying. And I bought a cooling pad uh, with fans for the laptop and it still didn't help. So I actually still had a gaming computer upstairs in my office where I am right here. I brought the laptop upstairs, hooked up my monitor to that, and now I use that for work and I moved my gaming computer or PC down to where my uh, golf simulator is permanently. So looking at the right at the graphic for the desktop PC, the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 5600 and the GPU was, is more than adequate with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. And if you look all the way to the left for GS Pro, that is what they recommend for hardware for a great 1080p experience. And also, if you'll notice, it has double or eight gig of GDDR6. 
The solid state driver SSD is one terabyte, the MSI M450. And uh, initially that computer had 16 gig of RAM and I updated that for like literally less than $60 and made it 32 gig. I've played probably 20 golf courses now with this computer, with those specs, and the fan has not ramped up even one time. I can't even hear it, which is absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna show you the difference between what I was playing with with GS Pro Lite and what Ultra is graphically. And really what I wanted more than anything was the water. I mean, the water looks not very good in GS Pro Lite. Most people probably wouldn't really notice that if they only use the software on GS Pro Lite. But if you go to Ultra, it's a huge difference, uh, the water. So let's go over that. All right, so the first thing you're going to be looking at here is a graphic with the driving range in GS Pro. On the top is light and on the bottom is ultra. Now, if you notice, let's say the sun was coming in from the right, or basically you're looking north, sun's in the east, and you'll notice that there on ultra is a shadow or shadows from the cliff, shadows from the trees. Uh, there is more definition in the grass. Uh, there is brightness uh, with the cliffs in more detail. There is more detail with the waterfalls and certainly a lot clearer and blue with the sky. Let's do a flyover as well. Now, the first thing you're going to see is a flyover of GS Pro's driving range using GS Pro Lite. Next, what you're gonna see is a flyover using Ultra. And some of the things that I noticed with the flyover is you're going to see shadows all the way down the right side. You're gonna have more definition in the turf. You're gonna have more definition in the cliffs, more definition in the water or the river off to the left, and more definition with the waterfalls. Really looks very, very nice. Next is going to be hole 16 at Georgia Golf Club. On top is GS Pro Lite, and on the bottom is Ultra. And the first thing you're going to notice is if you look at the shadow on the bottom for Ultra, it is a very detailed shadow for the trees. And if you look up top on light, you'll notice that the shadow is less and it's kind of blurry and just kind of boxy. Uh, there's not much detail. Um, the rope has a little bit more detail, but not much. There's more detail in the turf on the right and the left. In other words, there's grass, there's length to it. The trees are more dense in Ultra and also a little bit darker. But if you look in the distance, look at the water in GS Pro Lite, very blurry and very clear for Ultra. Now let's do a flyover. First thing you're gonna see is a flyover for GS Pro Lite. And then the second one is a flyover for GS Pro Ultra. And again, what you're gonna really notice is a big difference with the water. Next, this is hole number 17 at DPC Sodgrass. And light is on the top, ultra is on the bottom. What you're gonna really notice, like I said in the beginning, is the water. What a huge difference. You're gonna get the glare off the water. Up top, the water doesn't even really look like water. It looks like the pond or lake is completely empty to me. And look at the island. There's a palm tree on ultra, and on GS Pro Lite, you'll notice that there is two little dots. And I don't know why those are there. I think that may be a remnant of the tree. And when it nerfs down to light, you're not going to get those trees on there. And I think it just leaves those two little dots, which is very strange. And what's weird is like, if you're on the green, if you're on the green and you turn around, you can actually see these things floating in the air, which is really weird. Uh, so I was really hoping that Ultra would correct that, and it, it has. So let's do a flyover. So the first one, the flyover is going to be GS Pro Lite. And then the second one is going to be on Ultra. And again, huge difference with the water just looks so much better and more realistic. 
So that's pretty much it. I really wanted to just go over what GS Pro was recommending and my experience with it. And even though my laptop would run GS Pro just fine, I really wanted a excellent experience, or as GS Pro would say, a great experience. And it truly is a great experience on Ultra. I have not had any lag on any of the golf courses, and it just works perfectly on my gaming computer with the 3060 NVIDIA GPU with eight gig of GDDR6. That about wraps things up for today's video. Please smash that like button and share it with friends that may be interested in GS Pro or obtaining a new computer to run their GS Pro software or really any other golf simulation software. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so that you'll be notified when I release future content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.